Wishing Star, Sweeping Music, Trains, Firework, Castle, Monopoly? The Steamboat Willie Whistling logo without the whistling. If you're gonna spend almost a full minute on two self-aggrandizing logos, I demand whistling. I know what you're thinking. And yet here you are still narrating. A dystopian world. How did this world get so broken? The movie just started and I was not wondering any of these things. We were shown a broken statue thing with some rocks, a roly creature, and some statues that could very well be an art installment of some kind. I mean, now I have questions, but that's on you. I've watched this introduction several times now, and really the only thing that I need to tell you is that Moana did it better, and I'm shocked that nobody decided to tell the writers. This is what we used to be. Antelope? It should have been this big inspirational moment, but instead, people being people. People. Borders were drawn. Kumandra divided. Uh, wasn't it nice that they divided equally? Also, did you drawing borders create the rivers? That's just not how maps work. The only creature I know that can create a river is a phoenix. But that's not how the world broke. My mother tells stories like this. She calls from a hospital and tells me about the 10 hours before going to the hospital before finally saying that everything is fine and it was indigestion. Get to the goddamn point! That didn't truly happen until 500 years later. So we just spent 90 seconds going 500 years back in time to not be told how the world broke. And now we're expositionally thrust forward 500 years to finally get to the point? Mind you, this next sequence is still not present day. We're just making a pit stop to the most recent backstory explaining the world split before returning to the actual story that we are here to see. I mean, the view is great and it seems like this palace would easily be fortified, but all the sewage would collect down here, right? Just a swampy bog of shit, sort of hanging out directly underneath your pretty donut world. Who wants to live in a pretty donut world if it's poised over a shit lake? All right, tuk -tuk. Disney Animation's trend of having Alan Tudyk voice a wordless cute animal sidekick in every movie is one I can get behind, and Tuk Tuk is one of the cutest. So, one cent off for the amazing Alan Tutuk. Did you really need Tuk Tuk to trigger the traps? You're already going to crawl under them, and you know they're set off by depressing the stones. Is it really any better to have your living popple do it than you? That was awesome. Give me some shell. That is your hand, and not your shell, you ignorant, half-insect, half-mammal, adorable monstrosity. Boy, it sure is neat, oh, that the standard size of these stick weapons happens to be the standard size of the holes in these ancient door puzzles. This feels too easy. Which is why you should say that phrase audibly, so it echoes through this chamber and attracts danger. Which, of course, isn't actually danger, because this is all bullshit, and your cover would have been blown the moment this massive door opened up with this sound. I'd just like to point out, as she's slow-mo leaping here, that she just jumped from a horizontal position with probably a 60-inch vertical. And yes, I've seen the Simone Biles video too, but that was on those bouncy gymnast mats and not a wet rock. So forgive me if I'm a bit fed up that we're already going full, fast, and furriest physics here. Boop! Battle pretending to be between enemies is revealed to be between friends, but you already knew that because we're on to you, movie cliche. Wow. The spirit of Sisu. Spirit? I thought this was just dragon magic. You know, I'm all for explaining things that matter, but we're not even ten minutes in and my little notebook is filled with confusion. Just say dragons are stones, magic rock is important, and let's f***ing go! You are now a guardian of the dragon gem. Why? Because she got a toe on a rock? Shouldn't there be a few more steps before becoming an official guardian? Like, oh, I don't know, becoming an adult first? I'm glad you feel prepared, Dewdrop, because I have something important to tell you. It was in this moment that good old dad realized he had forgotten to train anyone other than his prepubescent daughter to assist in guarding the gym against an angry mob. Really? Tell me what you know about the other lands. And when I say me, I really mean the audience. This movie is going hard with its early forced exposition. If I weren't me, I'd almost be impressed. Making one of your tribe's main skills fruit ninjaing. Also, you caught a single piece of fruit and just wasted the rest. Your resource management sucks. We're going to share a meal with them. Dad is over here making symbolic soup, but none of what he says can be trusted when he adds the Kumandra ingredients into the soup and doesn't let them steep long enough to release their flavor. Raya, there's a reason why each land is named after a part of the dragon. Lack of creativity in the writer room? The realization that too many new names of things will immediately anger your audience? Am I close? If this scene makes you uncomfortable, it's because you're sitting like a croissant hunched over your screen and your subconscious is screaming at you to sit the f*** up so your organs can breathe and your spine can actually align itself as originally designed. Today, we can be Kumandra once more. Nice speech, Chief Benja. But why'd you really bring us here? Are you gonna rob us? Great question. One I'm sure that you demanded to be answered before traveling across the map to the doorstep of your presumed enemy. I have something to say! And because this is a movie, this entire group of previously grumble-cussing adults will shut up and listen. Hand to hand? Or swords. Blades all day. Right? <laughs> okay, dressy or casual? This is the most boring game of Would You Rather ever. Let's get to the good stuff. 
Would you rather fight 10 dragon-sized Raya's or 100 Raya-sized dragons? Hit the comments below with your thoughts, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notif- Are you supposed to have that? <laughs> no. Which is why I'm taking it out in front of everyone in this very open room. <laughs> Duh. I'm not stupid. So Tuk Tuk will follow them up these stairs. How exactly? Convenient, flare-friendly, open-air hiding place is inconvenient. Conveniently. Also, if the roof has a giant hole in it, with which one could blast a firework and call for aid, wouldn't it allow anyone to repel into the unguarded temple and steal the gemstone? Also, also, that's quite an explosion for a firework being housed in a tiny pull trigger. Wait, how did he manage to get from the palace all the way up to the temple, scale the building, and drop into the hole in the roof just as the baddies who were right outside the entrance arrived? I haven't seen anyone get to the hole that quickly since my cop. What is this? Fang's making a play for the gem. How is anyone getting here this quickly? Listen to me. And because this is a movie, this entire group of previously grumble cussing rioting adults will shut up and listen. They're repelled by water. Oh, for the love of a quiet signs of Oz, of course they are. But why are you saying this? Because you can't talk and walk at the same time, or jump in the water with you, or use the gem piece. Look, martyr's got a martyr, I guess. I guess I won't be needing this anymore. Raya has been chucked into the water, and while processing the ball trail, she has enough sense to grasp the gem and also not drown. Kids, man, we're resilient. Movie takes 20 minutes to bring us to the present. And boy, am I looking forward to the pace settling down and all the cuts from place to place ceasing. You know, just let the story develop like a well-seasoned soup on the stovetop. I'm gonna add 10 cents now for whatever bullshit explains away Raya's ability to control the speed and direction of a roly-poly hedgehog muffin of a mount. So Raya's visited here, 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 and here, and then skipped this one to go here? I mean, why not go in order? East to west, west to east. No matter which way, there's no reason to skip this location on the map unless you have a toaster for a brain. I've searched every river to find you. And now I'm here at the very last one. And of course, the last one is the right one, even though the chances of that are slim everywhere except in movies. Here, we must achieve ultimate desperation before success is granted. I trusted someone I shouldn't have, and now the world's broken. It's true. Her dad should never have been trusted. He trained a middle schooler to guard a gem rather than a small army of people capable of holding back an attack. And then he chucked her off a bridge without warning. What an asshole. Oh, oh you met Namari. Well, I just really, really want my bob back. This skip sponsored by Chili's. I want my bob back, bob back, bob back, Chili. I know this is meant to be a beautiful ceremony and all, but where the f is all this stuff coming from? She lit a couple flames and has some brash to display some other sh a map, a mat, a perfect flower, and some star leaves and a leaf bowl. Where is her bag of holding? Hello? I don't know, guys. I feel like the entire rest of this movie is an apology for not having Mushu in the live action Mulan. And honestly, it's too late to apologize. It's too late. When exactly do you think today is? Tuesday. The internet's reaction every time I forget to post a Sins video somehow makes it into the script. Oh my. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. That the Roly is stuck on its back again and unable to right itself despite having years of its life to develop a way to avoid being doomed to death in this precarious position? Yes, it is bad. Someone should go out there and help this idiot back up. Have you ever done like a group project, but there's like that one kid who didn't pitch in as much, but still ended up with the same grade? And now we know that in a beautiful utopian society, even dragons are subjected to the utter bullshit that is group projects. What a downer. If we can get all the other gem pieces, you I can, can reassemble, reassemble it and boom the drone away. Oh, it's my favorite part of these movies. You know, when an incredible leap in logic is made without question or reason. And for a bonus, both characters happen to say the same thing at the same time. Oh, <laughs> what a load of horse shit. But here we go. Presumably, Raya would have needed to exit this ravine the same way she came, which leads us to assume that she would pass her nemesis, since Namari was hot on her heels a moment ago. Yet somehow, Raya is all the way up here, far away from Namari and her crew, without seeing each other. Okay, so here's the cinch. After the gem broke. Whoa, whoa, whoa. More map planning? More maps position? More catching you up with information you need to enjoy the rest of this movie? We're in a half hour in. Get your fucking shit together, Disney. Wow, so many questions. First one, why, why am I wearing this? Better question, how did you find the resources to create this? Did the shipwreck happen to have a tablecloth and a sisu-sized hat? Those ropes are so far apart, Shaq could shimmy through them. Are the commandrons made of underwire? Because they are terrible booby trappers. I just shape changed into people! With clothes on and a foot wrapping, because why not? And also, at the perfect time, too. It's almost like the order of discovering the gem pieces has been predetermined by some sort of script. Someone stole Fang's dragon scroll. Oh, is that why you're chasing me? Why would Raya need to go through the trouble of stealing Fang's dragon scroll when she had her own map of the rivers? She used the stolen scroll during the summon ritual, but how did she know she needed the scroll to complete that ritual? And furthermore, if Raya had spent six years looking for Sisu and didn't have the scroll as she went to the end of each previous river, wouldn't she need to go back to each river's end to repeat the failed ritual? My point is, there's no reason for Raya to have the scroll in the first place. 
attempted murder. I suppose after watching Tuck Tuck fall from a cliff and dive into water without an issue that I should have no trouble believing it can also kip itself up into a boat without an issue, but I can't. What is happening? My friend's a really strong swimmer. Accepting this explanation. Someone could see you. Or more likely hear you, since you basically just yell, I'm a water dragon. Seems like that might be the greater concern. Why would he poison us? Yeah, why would I poison you? Oh, sure that you hear. This dragon graveyard's on for some time. Where are you guys heading after Talon? I might be heading there too. I mean, for a fee, of course. Mercenaries, although what was I expecting? Someone who would do it for free, like some sort of boondock saint? Lucky for me, empty pockets. Lucky? Is Sisu's clothing not chosen somehow when she transforms into a people? Is the idea here that Sisu has to wear her sibling's clothing? Which is why the sleeves extend past her hands? Dragon magic is dumb. What Denghai lacks in style. He makes up in mean. I'm sorry, lax in style? His clothes match. He has on frisbee bangles, massive jewels, and his beard is very nicely groomed. He's straight up dripping. <laughs> All right, look, I'll accept a lot from animated films, but a superhuman con baby is a no-go for me. It's like Disney farmed out an entire character to DreamWorks and just dropped it in the movie with no changes. And yes, I know there are dragons and magic and reverse flowing water, and I don't care. Con baby and her three Anji Migos might be the dumbest thing Disney has ever dumbed, and I'm adding 10 cents. Pay us back later, we don't know you. And yet we all waited till you were done with the shopping montage to confront you because... <laughs> oh, f you movie. Hey, how would you like to earn some honest loot? And by honest, she means still criming, but criming for her benefit instead of just your own. I'm Chai, the flower guy. Movie has time for this. Fog? Yeah. That was my brother Jagan's magic. Aren't you gonna believe the convenience of that fog? Well, we're stuck with them for a while. Cause Ongis have nine stomachs. But they're still tiny animals, right? It's not a matter of how many stomachs they have, it's a matter of what fits inside the stomach. In fact, the lining of nine stomachs would take up more room than just having one giant stomach. Would you rather have nine one-inch dicks or one nine-inch Hit the comments below with your thoughts and don't forget to like, subscribe. Chief Verana, we're running out of room. We need to expand to the mainland. Without proper protection, it would be a death sentence for our people. Look around, there's space everywhere. Tents could go here, a little shack over there. It would ruin the whole ambiance of wealth a bit, but that's a whole other issue. Look around. Look around, look around, how lucky you are to be alive right now. Seriously, how lucky that you already had built this canal right here and also got back across it so quickly when the droon were hot on your tail or hot on your fang or whatever. This isn't an emotional decision. It it's the only decision we can make to secure Fang's future. Not the only decision, just the one you really want to jump on, right? If the Fang can create this sort of structure, certainly they could adapt any number of these pieces of land into a fortifiable island. Dig a trench, let the water fill in, boom, secured. Are these people just dumb? In hindsight, maybe I was a little hasty. In hindsight, we will all wonder why Sisu didn't immediately morph into a dragon to save themselves. My name is Tong, and I kick open my own doors and remain standing outside with half my head above the doorframe for reasons completely unrelated to making a cinematic point about the size of my character. I'm not sure what's funny. You should have lunch with the person responsible for the con baby character for this movie. The two of you could trade stories about not understanding what makes something funny. I was born and bred to do only one thing. To invoke fear and to crush the skulls of mine enemies. That's actually two things. Sisu would soar at CinemaSense. Will you help us? The answer is yes, because this is a Disney movie and the previous minutes of threat and distrust simply melt away for no reason. Yeah, I knew you couldn't handle rolling solo. You're nothing without your band. This I'm outnumbered, but I challenge your pride so we can fight one-on-one -on -one trick somehow always works in movies, but you never hear of it working in real life. You know why? Because everyone who's tried it is lying dead after being wasted by a large group of enemies. Did you just hit me with a shrimp tail? Nope. Rewinded to confirm. That was a whole shrimp. So this is a sin for you thinking a shrimp tail would feel that hefty and for wasting a perfectly good shrimp. When were you going to tell us she was Sisu? This shot makes it seem like they are all mad at her for playing hide the dragon, but honestly, Tonk just met her and this cuddly <laughs> has known the entire time. I want to help. I'm sorry, I, I can't let you do that. Damn, Raya, how about Boone? You have a boat massive enough to carry everyone important to this plot you already have been helping. This idea that the dragons run on water in the air instead of flying is actually kind of inspired and beautiful, and damn it, I'm about to take another sin off. All right, everyone, here's the plan. Just when you thought there could be no more flashing back, the movie tricks us and flashes forward while simultaneously patting itself on the back for technically joining the list of heist movies. Now they're protected by an artificial canal that separates them from the rest of the world. Meaning all the fang lives on this tiny island? Yeah, 
I think I'd rather go with Boone's plan. Here's a plan idea. How about the shape-shifting, fogging, rain-dancing dragon just goes in there and takes it? Why are you making elaborate plans when you've got Falcor on speed dial? Also, come to think of it, why not form a plan to make it instantly rain around everyone during drone attacks to avoid being overtaken? This is where it all happened 500 years ago. And is nobody going to question how Sisu knew where her dead brothers and sisters were kept after all this time? Don't tell me they've been frozen in the same place for 500 years, because if that were the case, they'd be lined up like this. That's Amba. I get my glow from her. We know this. We've been through this. Every time you get a new fragment, you gems position us as to which sibling had which power. Don't double exposition me, Disney. I swear to God, I will end you in all the dragon movies you've ever made, Peach Dragon. And that's Prani. She's a shapeshifter. She was a shapeshifter. He's now just a shape statue. I just consulted the guidebook for flashback overuse and can confidently tell you that this movie is now most assuredly a prequel to Raya 2. You wouldn't just bring your Ba back. You'd also bring back his dream. Kumandra. And here's a convenient bridge peeping hole to spot him and further pound that point into the ground. It was Sisu. She can fix what we broke. She can bring everyone back. And they lived happily ever after because Namari was right and no one would be stupid enough to not realize the magic dragon who fixed it the first time would be the best bet to stop it the second time. The end? <laughs> this works. All of it. Any of this works. None of this should f work. She shoots Sisu by the seashore. The she she shoots is Sisu, I'm sure. So if she shoots Sisu by the seashore, I'm sure Sisu won't stay dead and will come back to life. So all the tension of this final act feels a bit forced. What's happening? A visual representation of my interest in this movie being sucked dry. Namari's mom had a massive piece of the gemstone stuck on the end of a stick, and every time we've seen her, she's been holding onto it like it's her goddamn wooby. Sure, Namari needs to be rid of her possessive parent in order to make whatever important decisions will save the movie, but her mom shouldn't have been turned to stone, and Raya should be fighting two women with the edgy I need to speak to the manager hairdo right now. Yes, honey, follow the baby to safety, said no one ever. Get to the water! Keep going! To the water? The water that just disappeared and allowed the drone to invade the city mere minutes ago? Is there a secret funnel toilet bowl somewhere? Look, it's another one shot that whips around each of our heroes to perfectly capture how awesome they are. It's like the Avengers if the Avengers were made up of characters I had barely met and didn't really care about. Of course the individuals holding the gem pieces happen to be gathered together as the ground gives way. It's like I willed this moment to happen. I was just thinking, can this movie get any lower down the list? And then they literally sink down into the ground. Dude. Do I have powers? Also, these assholes are super fortunate to fall down into this hole and all the rocks and debris miss them completely. Of course, no time to think about that, since the next scene is everyone warding off the drone and apparently the debris just made a roof. The damn magic is almost gone! Because what would a finale be when on some sort of ticking clock? But the drone swarm wasn't enough. I mean, what a poignant moment. All the tribes coming together, completely ruined by the fact that only one of these people is making the hands out pose that we all assumed was mandatory up until now. Now that the movie wants to pound in the unity message just a little bit more, these four get a team pose. Oh, it's back! Someone put on a Fincher movie because I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. Man, that magical Aslan breath rain seems really important. It would be a shame if a massive portion of the population were indoors during this pivotal downpour. So I guess someone dragged her ass out into the rain so she could be blessed by the magical dewdrops of unity? It's really cool that all these dragons gathered together to dramatically gallop over the waterfalls toward all the important people. And that, children, is how magical dragon sperm fertilize the happy ending egg. I don't want any of you questioning how these dragons knew where Sisu's dead waterlogged corpse was hidden under the waves. The answer has something to do with dragon homing instincts and sacred geometry. Shame on you for questioning the validity of their immediate and unquestioning plan to bring Olaf back to life. Oh, sure, now your leg is fine to run. Which just reminds me that you basically gave up earlier and let yourself get stoned. Actually, giving up and getting stoned sounds pretty good. Here's a few extra sins for whatever I miss from here. Oh no, he died! That all began 500 years ago. The four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. How about shrimp paste from tail, lemongrass from talon, bamboo shoots from spine, chilies from fang, and palm sugar from heart? It's too complicated for me. It's too many different textures and flavors. Things look a little tense, Bob. Don't worry, I'm gonna open with a joke. So there's this guy, Walsh, you understand? He's tired of screwing his wife. I've been asleep for 500 years. We'll give you such a crick in the neck. After all, why not? Why should I keep it? Hmm. (laughs) 
We got shrimp. You can barbecue it, boil it, brawl it, bake it, saute it. There's um, shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo. The captain, where, where is the captain? Let me go get him. I'm the captain now. I like children. For breakfast? I too wish to join this fellowship of drone, but kickery. And my axe. Superflow clan, am I right? Yeah, well, say we do all that. Uh, we're just supposed to walk out of there with $150 million in cash on us. Three, two, one, Care Bear Stairs. <laughs>